Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, back with another video. I'm gonna do a lake recap on this one. Um, of course, there's no fishing footage. Um, that pole I ordered still hasn't come in yet. Um, it's one of those yellow tech poles or whatever it is. It goes for your anchor light is. It charges your battery, your GoPro all day. Um, that's been my issue. My batteries just die so fast, especially this time of year when it's cold in the morning. The batteries don't last any time. And so, you know, I'll record for an hour or two. And uh, if I don't get anything good on it, I just end up deleting it and just scrapping it for the day. But anyway, I'm going to lake recap for you on um, Del Hollow. Uh, it was the first tournament of the um, MLF uh, Phoenix Bass Fishing League. Um, it, it kind of set up, I kind of set myself up for failure from the get-go. Um, I did not have a good tournament. I, I I'm just, it's keeping me up at night, you know, thinking about it, but can't do anything except put it behind you and move to the next one. Uh, I've got four more, so. Um, so, uh, as most of you know, most of the United States got hit, um, in February with that snow and ice um, at least the eastern part did so right after that here in Kentucky and you know Tennessee area and stuff um, it, we had a warm-up right after that and it, it was in the you know mid to upper 50s for a couple days and uh, it just melted everything off and put it into the lakes um, certain lakes either had more runoff than others or they just handled it better i'm not really sure how that goes um dale hollow i've, I've only been on dale once my entire life before this tournament um and, and i was like i was like 15 years old so i i can remember a little bit but not much um I, I've, I've fished so many other places i i can't remember every lake i've been to especially if i've only been there once so my intentions were to get down there early and, and you know and, and have you know three four days of practice um it did not work out um i had some personal issues here at home and i had to stay here and i didn't get out of here i didn't have my window to leave until thursday night so i mean it was late but i said you know what i'm going you know it's, it's the sooner i get down there the better so i got in late thursday night um and I only got to only got to a fish Friday, so it, it just you know the whole time on the drive down, I was thinking to myself, I'm just setting myself up for failure here, you know. But I'm trying to stay optimistic at the same time. But anyway, back to the the weather thing. I Cumberland got jacked. It got so messed up. The water came up so fast. They were pulling it so hard that it was muddy. It was chocolate milk, and you know because I had just fished there. Um, on Saturday, and then the, the following Saturday was this, this, you know, MLF tournament. So I saw how Cumberland fished, and I was like, this is going to be bad. It's, it's just going to be bad. Um, and then I saw the weather, and it wasn't supposed to rain all week. And I thought, you know, well, maybe the, you know, it'll settle down. I, like I said, I don't know how they'll, they'll handle stuff. So we went, um, we had some good weather there throughout the week. And like I said, I got down Thursday. It was cold. It, it changed. The weather changed there toward the end of the week. Of course, another obstacle. Um, and it got, you know, it started getting really cold at night. Um, during the day, the sun was out and stuff. So, I mean, I thought that would still, you know, help out the bite in the afternoon, you know, with the, trying to get the fish up. Dale Hollow is a really great smallmouth. Like, um, if you want to catch smallmouth, and you live close, I definitely recommend you go. Uh, they got some big ones in there. They got healthy ones in there. They, I mean, they got a lot of them. The issue is, during a tournament, they have a slot limit from 16 to 21 inches. You can only keep two smallmouth a day, and one has to be under the slot, a six, uh, under 16 inches, and the other one is over 21 inches. That over 21 would be difficult to find. Um, in my mind, I would think it would be difficult to find. 
Um, <clears throat> I'm sure if you put in the time, you could you could find it, but during a tournament, you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. Um, anyway, so I go down there and thinking it's going to be, you know, I, I've got to get largemouth. I've got to bring in largemouth. And um, I'm not, <clears throat> not a huge largemouth guy. Um, I used to be when I first started fishing until I caught my first smallmouth, and then after that, I was ruined. So, um, so I was going down there, you know, definitely watching the weather, definitely watching the the water tips and stuff like that. And I uh, I didn't get a place near the launch, so I ended up staying further south and in, in, on the lake. And I just launched where I stayed. So when I got up Friday morning, I launched the boat. I looked at the water. I mean, it looked like coffee. It, it wasn't good. Um, it was, like I said, it was cold. It was, you know, upper 20s. And um, I started thinking, you know, these largemouth are just like, you know, forget this. You know, this is not spring. This is nothing I want to be a part of. So... I started, uh, like I said, on the southern end of the lake, and I started doing my, my routine with, with practice. Minus two days, because usually the way I have it set up in my head and, you know, how I just do things is I usually get about three days worth of practice, and I can, you know, I can break down a lake in three days and, and have a good, really good idea of what I need to do. Uh, didn't have that, so I was trying to do it all in one day. And... Um, Spoiler alert, it did not turn out well. I um, was marking fish, and they were all suspended, you know, just, they just didn't want to commit to coming up. Um, the practice day was cloudy. Uh, some occasional sun would pop through. The high was about 46, 47, if I remember right. It did, I don't think it hit 50. Uh, it was a pretty cold day, um, and uh, I, I, I tried throwing a lot of different things uh, in that dirtier water. Um, I just figured that largemouth would, would prefer that, that water temp. Um, it was 56, averaged out about 56 in that dirtier water. Uh, I got back into some some pockets later in the day, and I actually I actually got 57, 58 at one point, and so I thought, you know, maybe it's coming around. You know, this, this might be the deal. Um, and I actually caught some fish, some, some decent fish during practice. Um, but it was it was it was just enough to make me t to make my mind up before I had tried other things because I knew I didn't have time to. And so I started thinking, you know, the water temperature, you know, I've caught some fish. This is probably going to be the deal. Don't do that until, you know, I, I'd love to blame something. I'd love to blame the weather and, and, you know, and the water clarity, but it's me. It's my fault. I did that to myself. And, you know, whether I knew it or not, I had already made up my mind. That's what I was going to do. Um, as the day went on, I tried to run further north on the lake, look at water and temperature and stuff. I got into some stained water. It, it wasn't as bad as that the water I was fishing. Um, the same thing was going on. I was marking the fish around the same spot. I, I threw the same lures. I was, I was working the same areas. I was, I was bouncing around. I don't think I let off the trolling motor all day um, when it was down just to try to cover water. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do any good in that stained water. So I, uh, I ran out of time while I was still in that stained water. I just, it started getting later and it started getting a little, a little colder. And, uh, so we it just, I just stopped at it there and we went back and put it on the trailer. And I was just thinking, you know, the whole time, like I said, I, you know, when I hit that stained water and I fished for about an hour and I was searching around for about an hour, I, I had already made up my mind that that just confirmed it in the back of my head. Do not do anything else. Do exactly what you did this morning. And I didn't even try out the, the upper end of the lake, which is just a capital mistake on my part. I mean, I just, 
you don't make a decision unless you try some, you know, everything, you know, try everything first, see how it compares, and then, then you can pick the, you know, what did the best. Because now after the fact, I've heard, you know, everybody tells fish stories, and everybody talks, and everybody says what they want to say, whether it's true or not. But what I've heard after the fact of the tournament, they've said that um, a lot of fish were caught in that cleaner water. Because apparently Dale is a very clean lake. It stays very clean. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't muddy up easy. Uh, just, I don't know if it's true. Once again, I, I don't know. But um, they, um, they said those fish just don't like it. They don't like when it dirties up. They'll stay suspended and, and they, won't, they won't bite anything. And because they, they just don't like it, they're not used to it. Uh, the fish in the cleaner water, they, they're, it's, that's home. That's what happens every day. So if you get some sun and things, you know, they'll, they'll more likely move up before the fish in the dirty water, which made zero sense to me, you know, biologically anyway. You know, you'd think, you know, the warmer water, they'd want to move up sooner than in clear, colder water. But once again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know that lake. And I didn't have enough time to figure the lake out, which is what my whole plan was. So anyway, fast forward, tournament morning. I'm not going to do something on a tournament day that, I ha that I've never even seen and, and not done. So I was not going to run to that clean water, or cleaner water anyway. I was going to go to what I, what I had fished, what I knew, where I had caught fish. Tournament morning, it was upper 20s, 30. I mean, it was cold. Um, the high that day was supposed to be 50, 52, you know, 50s. And, it, and it, the sun was supposed to be out all day. So I thought, you know, just confirming in my head a little more that if we had some constant sun all day, those fish in that dirty water were going to move up. They were going to move up. It was no doubt. And so we get um, we get to our spot, running my spots, and I'm, I'm sitting there looking. I'm slowing down. I'm marking fish, uh, starting off in the morning between, you know, probably 8 to 10 feet. And... Um, I'm, I'm around bait, I'm around fish, I'm, you know, slowing down, but try not to go too slow because then you can lose track of time and just working it, working my areas and couldn't get them to bite anything, you know. I tried throwing, I think, six or seven different things. I, I think in total I had, I had rods all over the place. Um, I just did not, I just couldn't get them to bite anything. Um... Neither could my co my co angler. He couldn't either. He, he was trying different things than I was trying, and still couldn't couldn't get anything going. But so as the day went on, working my way back up the lake, um, I noticed about maybe one o'clock the um, they started moving a little shallower. When I, when I got around fish and, and bait and stuff, I was marking them at. You know, around that six, four to six foot range, um, or six to eight. I'm sorry. Instead of that eight to ten, you know, so they were moving up, and I was like, "It's not, it's not gonna happen." You know, we're not gonna have enough time. Our check in was three forty five. Um, I started thinking to myself, "There's nothing else I can do because they, they just, they're not committing yet. You know, they won't move up fast enough for us to get in on the bite." Um, and with about an hour and a half left with nothing going I decided to scrap it and run about as far north as I could bear with with you know because you don't want to run too far once you get that far into the tournament with no fish because then you you're just killing your fishing time you know um the more time you have something in the water the the more time you you know the more chances you're gonna have catching fish obviously so I, I don't like making 20 and 30 and 40 minute runs that I mean it's not gonna happen yeah you know? no that's not that's not what I do so I, I took off and I got about as far north as I could bear before I was just like I gotta fish you gotta you know keep fishing I saw a spot look good we pulled up stopped on it um I think I made 10 casts it was it was some pretty cleaner water I think I made 10 casts and I caught a small mouth that was under the slot limit so it was keeper um put him in the box we had I believe at that point we had about 
30 minutes left um, before check-in, which at this point we were pretty close, so I, I was all right with it with the time. Um, my co was fishing around, and he, you know, he was trying different things, and and it, just nothing going. Um, we actually started making our way back towards check-in, and uh, he was, you know, I, I can deal when I mess up, and I don't get to do things that I need to do to be successful. I can deal with that because it's my fault. I blame me. It messed me up. My day was crappy. When my mistakes make somebody else's day crappy and, and reflect on somebody else, I know it's the way it goes, and it's a co-angler. They draw you. You draw each other. I understand that. But it doesn't mean it doesn't suck. And it sucks when you're sitting here looking at a guy that's just, you know, you. He's been down there practicing all week, but that's time and money away from his family, you know, and his kids, and you know, and and if you've done it, you know it. I mean, it's, it's a lot of time and, and effort and things, and and that's what I had fully, you know, planned on doing. But I just had, I had some things come up at home. I just could not. I couldn't get away until the last day. So I, I felt really bad, and um, I could tell his demeanor changed. You know, he was very optimistic to start the day, and then um, his demeanor just changed pretty quick there at that last hour. And, um, and so we had about 20 minutes left at this point. We were on our way back, and I, I just saw a spot, and I just I pulled up on it. I said, we'll fish here, and we'll finish it out here. And um, we were talking, and... He was telling me how he, you know, he worked real hard and put in a lot of time and, and effort and, and money. And, and I was telling him, I understand, and, you know, and it's it sucks. But, you know, sometimes that's just fishing, you know, especially this early time of year, that these fish, you know, one minute they can be up and the next, you know, or one minute they can be suspended. And then you turn your back, set a rod down, pick up another rod, flip up there, and then they're up there. You know what I mean? So I, I just kept telling him, just be optimistic. Come on, let's just keep trying, you know. I fish it down to the last minute because that's what he was telling me that morning. He was like, let's, you know, let's fish hard all day, not give up, go to the last minute. Because he knew exactly what I knew too, but he just he just couldn't tell me this, that the fish were suspended and that they were going to move up at some point during the day where we were. Um so, you know, that's why he that's why he was on me about, you know, don't give up, you know, make sure we go to the, you know, good spots. I mean, he didn't he didn't say go to your spots, but you know what I mean? He he was trying to be optimistic about it. So there at the end of the day, I was being optimistic towards him and I felt bad. And we were talking, like I said, and you know, he was telling me how he he worked hard and he sets the hook. At first, it doesn't move, and I'm like, eh, I don't know what he's got there. And then all of a sudden, this fish starts pulling out, and, and I was like, oh, he's got one. It's a good one. So I, I dropped my rod. I grabbed my net, and I about fell over my console right here into where I'm sitting because this fish came out of the water and was like almost tail walking. I mean, he was hot. I jumped across there, and I got that fish out of midair and brought him in the boat, and it was... It was as much a relief off of me as it was onto him, I'm sure. Just because, like I said, I can deal with me causing myself to fail. But when I cause somebody else to fail because I didn't do what I was supposed to do, it makes me feel bad. You know, I mean, it's not my job to make the co-angler catch fish. That's not my job. My job is to go out and try to catch fish. Now, if I'm in an area where there is fish, they should be able to catch one, you know. Based off what I'm doing, you're going to try to do something different. I've been there, you know. Guy in front of you is throwing a crankbait. Don't throw a crankbait. Chances are the guy in front of you is going to catch him. But, you know, I still felt bad because I just didn't have all the information that I needed to be successful, which is my job. You take on that responsibility as a boater when you enter these tournaments as a boater. You have to take on that responsibility and make sure you know what you're doing and where you're going to go. You know, you know, 
just going to sit at home until the last day and then, you know, leave. Oh, I'm going to go fish this tournament in the morning. That's not the way. It's not a local tournament. You know, you don't do that here at this level. You know, I know it's not, you know, professional, but you've got some things on the line here, you know. So, um, anyway, all in all, he, he, fish he caught ended up weighing just over three pounds. Um, it got him a check, so that was nice. Um, and it kept him in contention for for the regionals, which you, you just don't ever want to blank. You never want to go out there and zero. So that's a really good thing. My fish, uh, it was two and a half pounds for one fish, a uh, small mouth. Like I said, it was under the slot. I never picked up another one. Um, I feel like they started to move up there in that last, that last probably 30 minutes. Uh, once again, hearsay, I don't know. Um, you can never take it as being serious or being truthful, but f it's, from what I was hearing after the tournament, some guys were saying that all oh, that last flight checked in at 4.30, that there from 3.45 until, you know, 4.30 to the last minute, that those fish turned on and they moved up and, you know, they started busting them. And I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. I, you know, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, all I know is the guy who ended up winning, he weighed in in front of me, which means he was in a, he was in a flight ahead of me, which means he came in earlier and he had 22 pounds. So he got on him, you know, I mean, it, his weren't a moving up deal unless, I don't know, unless he was in that clean water and that's just what they were used to. And they moved up as soon as the sun came up. I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't know. They caught them. You know, there was there was a lot of guys, you know, 13, 14, 15, 17. There was a lot of them with. So, I mean, they, they were there. And those guys weighed in in front of me. So, that's why I can't really take what I'm hearing after the tournament that that last flight really caught. I can't really take that. I mean, maybe they did catch them. But guys ahead of me who checked in before me caught them too. So, that wasn't like they were shut off until that point, you know. Maybe if the leader was 12 pounds, I, I would think that. And then all of a sudden it looks like it does now 22, 17, 19. Then maybe I would think that. But th those guys had already weighed in in front of me. So, yeah, I I, uh, I don't know how to take that. But I, I promise you, next one, next one there will be a lot more practice done. And I'm going to set myself up for success on the next one. And um, hopefully it's just a better tournament but all in all that's the recap for me on dale hollow tournament number one hopefully the next one's better i'm really looking forward to the cumberland tournament if i'm being honest with you i mean i'm excited it's just a lake that i like to fish and hey i can bring in five smallmouth if i want to you know <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be fantastic but um until then you guys Keep watching. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get some fishing videos. I promise. Um, until then, I'm just gonna I'm gonna do like as much recap as I can, um, kind of fishing report type thing. Um, products, looking at things. Um, try to catch some fish, you know. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Until then, go out there and catch some fish. Stay safe. We'll see you.